We are ready to go for the first heat. Let's bring them out. Heat number one, Matt Coger versus George Williams. All right, here we go. This is gonna be heat number one in the round of 16 on stand number one. It's gonna be Matt Coger and this man right here on stand number two, George Williams. There's Matt Coger, the seven time U.S. champion, the winner of the U.S. trophy title in 2018, winner of the world trophy title 2019. His opponent from Nova Scotia in Canada, George Williams was here last year, fifth in the national individual championship, fifth in the national trophy champion for Canada, championship for Canada as well. We have all qualified for time trials earlier today. The matchups are based on their finishes in that. Matt Coger says he is ready to go. He is healthy and he is looking to win. This is a bit of a new format for us. This means this is no longer the U.S. trophy event. This is now the North American trophy event for this year, at least. U.S. and Canada head-to-head. -head. So we will have individual champions, U.S. and Canada, respectively. But we'll mix it all up, and we will also crown our North American title. Wow, Matt Coger, very quick to the block. Game Drew had mentioned in our intro, this was his world record event, 54-ish seconds, and now belongs to New Zealand, that title, that world record title, and he is looking to regain it. I don't think we're gonna see him post that world record time here in the first round. He's got a long path ahead of him, presumably, so he should be advancing fairly easily through this round. He's already on the single buck event. I, I can't emphasize it enough. This single buck event is so difficult. You run over there. You gotta get your feet in the exact right position. You gotta get in that comfortable set. And Matt just looks effortless out there. Very smooth, very controlled as he transitions over to the stand and block chop. One and one to open. He's gonna start chasing those corners. Two up hits, two down drivers, should be two more up hits, and then he'll switch, no, just one more up hit on the far side, and he'll switch over to the back side of this log again. One and one, and he's already looking to drive. Wow. wow. What a finish. <laughs> Under a minute in his first round in a, a fairly easy walk for Matt Coger. What an exclamation point. I think we just saw some experimentation there from Matt Coger in that standing walk. I think it worked. Uh, if that's cruising speed, I can't wait to see it when it's really good. Going that block, that Going to get through this one right here. All right. George is done. Unofficial time of 58.38 for Matt Coker. I asked you before we started here, was he going to get under a minute? He said, I think so. <laughs> that's that's done. Yeah, pretty handily. We checked that box already. over to the single buck, steps into place. We've seen a lot of guys struggle with that. They're, they're coming in on a, a relatively dirty surface with the, the chips from the stock saw event there. But this is where he really shined. The ax was loving this block. He was cutting very well. Watch this, one up, one down, goes into a round of drivers, one near, one far, cleans this block off with an exclamation point, made it look effortless. Quarter final round, let's bring him out, Matt Coger and Ben Nicely. Matt Coger on the left. Getting ready to go with 
Heat number one of the quarterfinals, Matt Koger. Time-wise, our fastest through the round of 16. Take care of George Williams, Canada, Nova Scotia, Canada, in his first round. Going up against Ben Nicely. Ben Nicely. Performing nicely in his uh, first round. His heat of 16 went taking out Canada's Marcel Dupuis. Not a small feat. No, that was ben a surprise nicely. for me. Um, and it was nothing against Ben Nicely. Just Marcel's a great cutter. He's, he's been right there in this trophy event for so many years. So good on Ben Nicely. He's, uh, I don't know if you want to say fighting above his weight class or whatever, but he, he hey. put on a great cut and he's here. He deserves to be here. He's going to have to fight above his weight class again, I think, coming up in this yeah. heat yeah. upcoming. Going up against Matt Koger. Warm up your saws. Seven-time U.S. champ. Won the U.S. trophy in 2018. Backed it up, winning the world trophy in 2019. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two. One, go! And Koger very quick on the go, up into the block. I don't think he had his hand exactly where he uh -huh. wanted it. I'll have to go look in the replay to see what all went on there. Uh, it seemed like a little bit of a, a, a bobble there on the stocks off. Here he is, look at this beautiful lurking on this hang up from Nicely. Plus, oh, and another hang up from Nicely. And it's just a surprise on the momentum. How the action recovery of all these is so critical to keeping that flow. There you see a firm accent from Matt Coger. He just saw what happened to Walt Page in that last game. He doesn't want it to be here. Not really putting on a blistering pace here in this single buck. Matt Coger's putting up a good cut. I think there's more in the tank, though. Ben Nicely still right there with him. Here we go, down to the standing block. And if I'm Ben Nicely, I do not want to try to pass Matt Coger in a standing block. Last puck driver there from Coger as he comes around. One opening, one and one for opening blows. Chasing those corners near what he's done. Oh, my gosh. Wow. What a beautiful finish. Just, uh, these guys that drive off that much timber, yeah, it's nice soft, white pine, it's beautiful wood to cut, but the hit placement and the confidence and the tool, it all has to line up just driving through a disgusting amount of timber out there. Matt Coger's time, not as fast as it was in the round of 16, but fast enough to get the job done. All you have to do is win, just win. And the winner is Matt Coger. Hey, there's so many things. He, in your mind, look, I just want to chop. I want to chop and I want to saw. But there are rules, and it's happened to you. You've been knocked out from slight rule infractions, and you saw what happened earlier uh, with the axe coming out. Um, is, is, does that get stuck in your mind? Do you ever have, have deja vu, like, oh, I hope this doesn't happen to me, or you just like, you just got to go for it and, and do your job and trust your training? I think all the hours that you spend training, you know, that's what happens. You're thinking about it. It's like, you know, what, what, DQ, what are we going to get DQ for this year? And then you got to put that out of your mind. Just focus on what you're doing on stage. Put the best cut you can forward and then, you know, just hope for the best towards the end. You want to tell the crowd real quick how you're keeping yourself going in between events? Because you, you've got to go again in about 10 minutes. What are you doing out back? Just staying a little bit uh, stretched out, just uh, using the Theragun, keep the, keep the muscles lubed up, you know. I brought a uh, conditioning bike just to help get some of that lactic acid out and keep giving everything flowing. And, you know, your heart's the pumper for this whole race, so you got to keep it clean, too. Go rest up, buddy. Thank you for the interview. Here you go. Big round of applause. Matt Coger. Yeah, there it was. So now, now that we slowed things down and I can actually <laughs> process a little bit, I knew something didn't look right. There you see that two-finger grab uh, as he hooks onto that chain break. So again, that's bad, but it could have been worse. A few ounces of extra pressure against that chain break and it will lock up the clutch on that saw. It's a safety feature, it's supposed to be there. So again, bad, could have been worse. This is where though I think he lost some time is in that single buck. 
it was, it was a smooth cut, it was a clean cut, but it wasn't that Matt Coger pace that we're used to seeing. So I'm not sure if he was, if he knew he had this uh, this heat in the bag and just kind of set a little bit of cruise control pace here. But again, safe, clean cut, got the job done. No hangups like we've seen in some of the other heats like Mark Boquin earlier on today. Just kind of gliding from station to station. Didn't look like he was uh, overdoing it, getting ahead of himself in any way. He's keeping it in control. And, and again, this is where we saw this with uh, Jason Lentz. we got to talk about how these guys are finished the block. Tons of wood cleaned out on the far. Leaves that pig's ear, that, that little peak of wood in the back, and they just thunder down a blow on the back side of that log, the far side of that log, I should say, and just drive through a tremendous amount of wood. That saves you that chip hit, that up hit. If you don't actually have to put in an up and a down hit to clear that wood out and you can just slice through it, you've just saved yourself one blow of the ax. That could be the difference between a championship and a silver medal. Well, Matt Coger gliding his way right into the semis with that cut right there, a minute, one. 0.39 seconds, which is a little bit slower than his cut in the first round, as we said. But uh, as you said, Kevin, probably just pacing himself a little bit, getting ready. Matt in just terrific shape. Uh, talked about his training regimen, calls it low impact training. He, he, before he makes a cut in his training regimen, he does about 30 reps on something called a ski erg, which is sort of a, a rowing machine that can work horizontally or vertically. Just really super worn out with that and then makes his cut to train for trophy. That was our first heat here in the quarterfinals. We will have three more heats to identify four. We will pass on to the semis. If you're just joining us, Matt Coger, seven-time U.S. champ. Won his first two matches, his first two heats in order to gain the semis. But also, if you're just joining us, it's worth pointing out this is the second time, excuse me, this is the third time that all of these competitors have run through this sequence today. They all went through time trials. They all went through the first round. Now we're in quarterfinals. This, this is all of their at least third time running through all of these disciplines. You got to well, build you just up. Arrived, you showed up at the right time. This is the semifinal round. Let's bring him up from Grafton, West Virginia, Matt Coger. And his opponent from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Matty Slingerlin. Here we go, Matt Coger. What a dominant figure in the United States and the world stage for the past 10 years, seven times. The U.S. champ, winner of U.S. Trophy back in 2018, winner of the World Trophy in 2019. Matt Coger going up against Matt Slingerlin as he on his best trajectory ever in one of these top level events. Could be, seems to be very, very calm and in control and sort of controlling his own destiny here. He's got a major challenge though in that man right there, Matt Coker. Yeah, I, I, I can't agree more, Tommy. I, I fought you on that last thing about running the 400, but I'm on board <laughs> with you on this one. Uh, you want it, I give I, you that one. <laughs> I I love what I'm seeing from Maddie Slagelin today. This is that mental focus. This is exactly what we've needed to see. This is what we haven't seen at some critical points over the past couple of years. But again, to your point, now here Warm comes up Matt your stars. So, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. Up until recently, Matt Coger held the world record in this event, 54.68. Now he holds the second fastest Stand ever time. To your timber. Three, two, one, Pro. go! Matt Slingerland, super quick on that start. I love that. I think it's going to pay. Oh, no, they're going to come out about a dead heat. So Matt Coger yes, able to reel him in. Up. But there it is, just maybe a strike and a half ahead of Matt Coger. This is going to be an absolute barn burner. It's going to come down all that. Tommy, that was so small, but that may have been it right there. There was a hanging hit so with Matty Slinger on the bottom of the front side of the top. Something as minuscule as that may hang.
setting him up, but no, there's bigger trouble. There it is. He finds the end of that. He has got to get his in gear in this single buck event. He's got two very, very Matt Coker-ish events that he now has to out Matt Coker in. It. Doing his best, the boy just cannot keep up, cannot hold no, serve so I think far. he gained a little bit in that single buck event. Continues his dominance of 101 around that same time that we saw from Hodges earlier today. Oh, that it was, yeah. Maddie Slinger was right there. There's a few pieces just started to fall apart, but right there. Two two good friends. These guys have just literally grown up multi-generational competitors. They've grown up in the sport together. Awesome to see them race together. Nice job, gentlemen. The winner is Matt Koger. We got Matt Koger here from Grafton, West Virginia. Maddie, the last two years. As John Denver said, it's been almost heaven in West Virginia. Almost. Yeah. You're going back again in the finals. One more. How you feeling? Yeah, feeling all right. Just uh, another one in the, to cut and see what happens in the end. I like how you were running over to your single buck, just kind of shaking your hands, loosening it up. Seems like you, you're just loose, having a little fun. And then you, at the end, you, you do have to have some fun, be loose and let yourself do what you've been training, trust yourself. Yeah, you just gotta trust what you've been working on at home and you know, trust in your gear, knowing that it's cutting and, and then just let it, let it eat. And then at the end, just, if you left it all on the deck and you still lose, you, you, still, you still won. We'll see you in a few minutes, buddy, in the final round. Big round of applause, Matt Cogar, he's going back. Our final round, moments away. Folks, one of the cleanest runs that we've seen in terms of both competitors just leaving it all on the stage. Matty Slingerland super fast to that block. Matt Coger was able to reel him in, I think, a little bit through the wood on that stock saw. Very clean run. Ultimately, though, it was right here in the underhand chop where Matty Slingerland just fell behind a bit. I don't think he had quite as much done on the front side of the log, kind of took out a loan on the front side, had to pay it back on the back. That gave advantage to Koger going into that single buck event. Matty Slingerland's an exceptional single sawyer. I think he regained some time maybe in that single buck event, but it just wasn't enough. You turn Matt Koger loose on the standing block, and uh, he is right there with Jason Lentz. Again, beautiful, clean front face in the front side of that standing block. Look, him with a, look at him with a very short, uh, small back face, and then just drives through an enormous amount of wood. Time of one minute, one second, 35 for Matt Koger. Just kind of keeping it even keel right where he was in the last. He was a little faster in the very first in the round of 16. No matter, he's there. He's into the final. The other half of that final has yet to be decided. Matt Slingerland will go on to the small final to uh, do battle for the bronze medal. Here, this is the final event, final round. Let's bring him out from Grafton, West Virginia, Matt Koger and his opponent, the two-time returning champion from Diana, West Virginia, Jason Lentz. Bear in mind, this is the fifth time, the fifth go around for this extreme exertion effort that you have to put out to win. The only way they got here is to win every time they teed it up today. Four heats, four wins in the tank for Jason Lentz. Same thing for Matt Coker. Both of these guys have been in this position before. Jason Lentz would like for it to turn out the way it turned out last year. And the year before, Matt Coger would like to uh, change the scenario, change the narrative this time around. 
Well, Tommy, in, a, in addition to the exertion that these guys have put down for uh, the number of rounds they've been competing now, I feel exhausted. <laughs> this is just... It is a little bit of an emotional roller coaster oh. watching this. It's such a great Warm performance. Up such athletic performance. Absolutely. You know, I know I'm supposed to provide some kind of brilliant insight as to which discipline who's going to pull ahead with and Athletes whatever. Ray. These guys are Stand just going to be neck and neck. Timber. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Super quick to the timber. Very clean cut. So they're going to come right out of the bottom of this together. Then transition over to the underhand. Just a half a swing advantage for Lentz. We'll see if he can hold that advantage. That may be. The, oh, there's a hang up, though. There's two oh hang ups from Jason Lentz. Now advantage, Coger. Into the back of this block. I think Coger's got it. Yeah, he's really got clean. It. He looks really good. Oh, my Lentz goodness. Lentz has got trouble. Look out. Lentz has got to stay oh, in this, though, because there you go. There's a hang up for Coger in the single block. So I feel like Lentz almost looked a little defeated stepping off that underhand, but now he's switching it into gear. He is gaining on some time, gaining some time on Coger. Matt Coger, though, he is just going to run away with this standing block chop. He, oh, both of them are on the back, though. Oh, my goodness. Jason has a really short front, though. I don't know if he can overcome this. He's a driving temper all day. This might oh, it's going to be Coger. He is. <laughs> he has been just absolutely doggedly going after this event. And he finally got it. What a, what a run from Jason Lentz, though. Wow. Just unbelievable race from top-notch Axman. The level now with two national trophy championships apiece. Matt Coker certainly holds huge eggs and edge in national championships. But what a day. All right, gentlemen. Nice job. The champion is Matt Coger. Hey, you can keep those hands up as long as you want, buddy. I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm happy. You, you know, you, you did have, it wasn't flawless. I know you, yeah. you pick apart all the all the hits. Last year you said I had three sticks. I, I hung the single buck. It was not a flawless race. You did have a hang in the single buck, as did Jason. Yeah. These things happen, but you just have to move past that. 57 seconds, your fastest time of the day. Take us through that race. <laughs> it was such a blur. I don't know if I can remember it all. Uh, you know, like, really, it's just getting it, getting over to this underhand, cutting it, you know, I felt maybe like a little few slips there. Got to the back of the, the block. It split off. I was like, come on, you got to come off here. Came off, got over to the single buck. I knew Jason, he's such a great competitor, hard. He's, uh, he's really great as a single buck. And I was like, okay, you got a new saw, trust it. Just get into it, and you know, just okay. Got through that, slipped, and I was like, God, oh, God, come on. And then got to stand a block, one of my favorite events, eating my, probably one of my best events, and just cut the thing and had a little bit of a mental blur in there because there's a, I think there's a little chipping in my edge of my axe and a little scratching on the log. And the whole time I was just like, just keep trucking, just keep trucking. Tell us the difference fitness-wise. How do you feel physically? between this year and 2023, right now, in the moment? Right now, in the moment, I feel good. Let's run up another one. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I've got to tell you, I've been commentating for about 15 years. I've never seen more emotion pour out of you after an event. Enjoy, buddy. We got an award ceremony coming up. Stick around. Thank you. There you go, Matt Coger. He's done it from Grafton, West Virginia. And here we go, our gold medal winner for the first time in Virginia Beach from Grafton, West Virginia, Matthew Coger!
taking home his second national title. Give it up one more time for Matthew Coger.